I'm Dean, I'm the dad. I'm Laura, I'm the mom. And I'm Crystal, I'm the daughter. And together we are Family, Family Plot. Plot. Very nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for listening as always. Uh, if you want to help us out, a couple ways you can do that. First, there's Patreon. Uh, it's uh, th There's just two levels, one and three dollars. You get cool stuff for donating. It's a monthly thing. You can pause it if you need to. Um, if you can do a monthly donation, uh, you can donate a single time through buy me a coffee, just a whole one to whatever dollar amount. Um, if you don't have money, we don't care because we've never had much ourselves. If you enjoy the show, please share it on social media. Share it with friends. Share it with family. With, with everyone. everyone. And if you don't enjoy the show, please keep, keep it, it to, to yourself. yourself. So what are we talking about tonight? Well, tonight we go to Texas, but not the Texas we know, but a different Texas where the strange was normal to meet an incredible individual by the name of Pecos Bill in this one-of-a-kind American folklore episode of the Family Plot Podcast. But first... But first... Krista has a corner. A corner. <laughs> It's not just any corner, it's Kristen's Corner! Hello, how are we doing this fine evening? I'm doing great. I'm here with you and you. <gasps> oh my goodness, how are you doing, Mama? I'm, I'm here with you. <laughs> I'm alright, uh, we're, we're pushing, pushing forward just as we do. How about you? Yeah. How I, are I'm... you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm doing pretty good. Let's we've, see here. We've had we've had nice weather. Yeah, nice weather. Super they were thinking nice of weather. taking us off on Wednesday. I don't know why. Okay, because if the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl on Sunday, then on Wednesday, Kansas City would do a parade to congratulate. Oh, yeah. That is why. So if we win, so of course, we are in Kansas City, Missouri. It's Missouri, not Kansas. For anyone who doesn't know, the Kansas City Chiefs are in Kansas City, Missouri. And let me point that out. That makes me crazy. Let, let me point out, it's also pronounced Missouri, not, not Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. Yes. Please don't you. say Missouri. Absolutely. Although, to be fair, most of the people I've ever heard say Missouri lived in Missouri. I, I, and I don't understand it, but it's whatever. We don't say... I'm not going to get into it because that's a whole back and forth that we don't... That's the whole tomato, tomato, potato, potato thing that we don't need to jump down that rabbit hole right now. Just saying. But our Kansas City Chiefs, yay Chiefs, not that we're big sports fans, but... Yay Chiefs! No hometown pride. That's all right. There's nothing wrong with it. And if they would win this weekend on Sunday at the Super Bowl, then our school district will give our kids that day off so that they can celebrate and show that hometown pride. So that's why. Yep. So uh, you'd be let off school for a parade you're probably not going to go to. You're definitely not going to. Oh, no, definitely I don't not go going downtown. To. Especially not when there are hundreds of thousands of crazy Kansas Cityans out there showing their pride. <laughs> I'm just saying, if Carla wanted to take her or something. Well, of course. Yeah, it was 
I would let her go. I'm just saying, we're not going. <laughs> yeah. we're, not, we're, not, we're not that dedicated. Definitely not that sincere of sports. Personally, I find it a little frightening. I only find it frightening because they shoot off guns anytime the Chiefs score a no, touchdown. they shoot off fireworks. What I find frightening is that the last time that we won the Super Bowl, the world shut down for COVID, and it still just freaks me out just a little bit. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's totally fair. So, back to your corner, because that's where we're supposed yeah, to be. So sorry. Yeah. What else are you talking about in your corner this week? How's well, school? School's fine. Okay. Not one of my favorite topics, but it's fine. I'm just trying to, to help you break into your, 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 your... Corner. Your corner here. Make it your own. Put up it's a demi flag. After, it's named after her and everything. Flag? Yeah, you got a demi flag in your room. It's torn down. Why? Why? I just tore it down. Okay. 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 I got stabbed in the arm again. By who? How? I, Why? Oh, I got my blood drawn. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was for a good reason. They were checking her labs. They were checking my lab. Didn't they say I had, like, good levels? Okay, so your, decent levels, levels. your levels were a little off, and they just wanted to double-check them before they changed your dosage. Because the doctor didn't want to overwhelm you with too many pills because you're a young lady. Yeah, that's fair. And pills can make you, your, your stomach upset. Well, and it's just the more she has to take, the more chance she'll forget. And... Your excuse this time. This, this time. time. Yep. Um, you know, I've been watching. Like There's what? One that's recent. Into has been hotel. Yeah, I'm in the has been hotel. I've just finished it not that long ago. I'm obsessive over Lucifer. Lucifer Morningstar. The show Lucifer? No. No, it has been hotel. It's has been hotel. an animated show. Oh. Gotcha. I was gonna say. I I appreciate you liking some Neil Gaiman, but uh, no. And I'm probably mispronouncing that. I always say Gaiman, and I think it's Gaiman. Yeah, I think it's Gaiman. I don't know. Though, we just finished listening to the audio book of uh, American Gods, which was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. But, this is not my corner. This is Krista's corner. Yeah, but Chris is not being very talkative, so we're just kind of all doing like a talky thing tonight. I guess we're just doing a it's talky a thing. It's a family That's okay. talk for Krista's corner. Family talk. What, what episode? We're in 184. Nice. This is episode 184. Uh, we're three episodes away from being joined by uh, Dan B. Fierce. Yay! Nice. Uncle Danny's going to join. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, episode 187, because of his book, Cabin 187. So he's, he's going to join us for that episode. Oh, oh, my Krista, Krista, did you have anything else you felt like talking about tonight? You watched any more Supernatural? No. I haven't seen Kevin yet. Oh. <laughs> did, did you smack her or did you do an awe? <laughs> I hit the slap. I don't know that I have an awe. Yeah, he hit me, so I said aw. Yeah. Aw. Why did you hit our girl? Because she's she stopped watching Supernatural. I didn't so stop. Right. I'm just taking a break. Baby, I don't want to be obsessive of her show. I baby, I was just trying to be playful. I'm sorry. I know you were. I mean. Anyway, um, that's it. I think. Yay! All right, let me. <laughs> and now we have cl claps for the Krista. Yay, Krista! Yay! So I was just fixing them. Not a so big deal. good now? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I hope so. I can probably fix it in post if not. Need to pause and check. Nah, we're good. We're good, Mom. Okay. So, uh, you cannot talk about uh, Pecos Bill without talking about this person. Edward Sinnett O'Reilly, better known as Tex. 
He was, huh? We're about to, I'm about to explain all that. Oh, okay. He was born in 1880 in Denton, Texas. Uh, weirdly, the only other Denton I've ever heard of is in the movie uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Isn't and it Denton, may. Ohio? It, well, it could be, but it could. Maybe I'm confusing Denton and Dayton, but I thought there was a Denton. Anyway, sorry. But yeah. So, uh, Edward O'Reilly was born in 1880 in Denton, Texas. Uh, Edward Sinnott O'Reilly, who would later earn the nickname Tex, was part of a large family. His father was a construction worker, and they would move around a lot so Dad could look for work. When there was no work to be had, they would retreat to a ranch near San Saba County, Texas, where they would live for short periods of time. Even though it was late days of the Wild West, and really 1880... That's the dying days of the Wild West. Well, except for uh, the Wild West didn't die. It actually moved to Montana, but we'll get into that in another episode. <laughs> <clears throat> but living at that time had a profound effect on young Edward. He learned to ride. He learned to rope. He learned to shoot and to live in the wilderness. When, his mo- when he was very young, his mother sent him to the market in town where he witnessed a shootout where no less than seven people were shot. Quite a few shooting them. Yeah, so, so picture that, living in Newman, and, and poor Demix at the age of 10 or 12 is just going to get a soda somewhere, and he witnesses a shootout where seven people are shot. Oh, I mean, Newman wasn't really the place, but it's not actually that far off. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm just saying, uh, this worried Edward's parents so much, they moved to Chicago in order to keep young Edward away from such violence. Chicago, isn't that where, like, we've talked about mobsters and stuff in the early 19th? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't know that they really understood the steps they were taking, but okay. Well, here's the thing, wherever you go, there you are, and problems you run into one place, you tend to run into again in others. Uh, However, it was in Chicago where he learned of the sinking of the Maine, which was a ship, in Havana's Harbor in 1898. Edward was 17 at the time and signed up for the military, faking his age, seeing as he was only 17, and his parents refused to sign off on him joining early. I I think if they'd had their way, he never would have joined up as all. He was quite disgusted with the rations he received at the time and was not thrilled with the fighting in Havana. Still, he would work through this war and work as a mercenary in several others. He also started writing about this time. Now, he wrote uh, a book about his life, Adventures in Under Four Flags, where, you know, all this mercenary stuff he did. He wrote journalistic articles. But one of the things he wrote, uh, it was towards the end of his time as a soldier that he published stories of Pecos Bill. Now, he claimed when he wrote them that he had heard the stories as a young man and that he was merely setting down tales he had heard that sprung from an oral tradition among settlers in the Wild West. Since then, folklorists have simply claimed that there was no oral tradition of Pecos Bill tales, but rather that Edward had simply invented the tales and wrote them as folklore. Well, I mean, either way, sounds like he had stories to tell, and there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. But, um, before I take over, maybe we should hear from one of our fellow indie podcasts. Yes, we should. (laughs) Hey, you. Yes, you. Are you looking for a new podcast that appeals to your scientific curiosity, but is also a little bit spooky? Show me how I died in a past life. Well, look no further, because this cat is where it's at. He had concerns about the ethics surrounding AI, feeling they had achieved consciousness. Curious Cat Podcast examines the shadowy space where science and the supernatural collide. Listen every week with your host, Jennifer Holtz, as she and her guests explore what it means 
to be a soul in a meat suit. We were healing karma together. They were all kind of predestined to, to resolve something. Listen on all your favorite streaming apps and continue the conversation on Twitter at CuriousCatPodCA or find Jennifer and all her links at Jennifer L. Hotes, spelled H-O-T-E-S dot com. Well, that sounds interesting. We're going to have to check them out. Yep, for almost certainly. All right. Well, Bill was the youngest of 18 children. I don't know that that classifies as a very large family. I think that classifies as an insanely large family. Well, yeah, now remember, this either was told tales. Uh, I, I, I know, I get it, but wow. <laughs> and, you know, this isn't going to be like Thor or Spider-Man. Uh, uh, tale telling hadn't quite got to that point That's yet. That's true. That's true. So... As was told, Bill was the youngest of 18 children and so tough that he used a bowie knife as a teething ring and made wild animals his playmates. According to the stories, young Bill was sleeping soundly in the family Conestoga wagon when he fell out near (coughs) the Pecos River. Baby Bill was found by a mama coyote and raised as part of her litter. He lived with the family of coyotes for several years when he was found by his brother and convinced him he was not a coyote. He was found by his brother. Who and he was... Bill grew up to become a cowboy. He used a snake named Shake for a lasso and he had a smaller unnamed snake that he used as a whip. Really? Yeah. He rode a horse named either Lightning or Widowmaker, depending on which tale you hear. In the stories where the horse is named Widowmaker, he is usually called that for being Texas's first and greatest serial killer, killing every man that dared to get on his back. Really? <laughs> Obviously... Pecos was the first to ride Widowmaker without getting killed, and thus they became fast friends. The horse's favorite food, at least according to some stories, was dynamite. Oh. What the what? fudge? What a trip. All right. Well, that gets us off to quite the interesting start. Yeah, and I think maybe goes. we should take a little break and get a yeah. word from our sponsors. Yeah, I think we need to take a break and wash Chris's mouth out with soap. She said, <laughs> I said fudge. fudge. She said fudge. Yeah, I was worried fudge. about it too, but she she, I said she fudge. Okay, she I turned it to it. fudge. So yeah, let's take a moment for a word from our sponsors. Thank you for getting us to this point, Chris. You're welcome. Hey, Chris. Yeah. I feel sponsored. Me too. Awesome. And now I feel so sponsored that I'm going to talk about this next thing. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> From there, like most who star in Tall Tales, Bill went on to wander Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and California. Uh, Bill is credited in these tales with inventing the branding iron roping an entire herd at one time, uh, and harnessing the Rio Grande to his water ranch, to water his ranch. Um, At times, he would bypass Widowmaker or Lightning in order to ride a wildcat. At one point, uh, Bill even lassoed a road cyclone through the American West. At one point, Bill was attacked by robbers near California. He fist-fought the men, hitting them with blows so powerful, he was knocking the gold from their mouths, and these teeth would land somewhere near Sutter's Mill, eventually causing California gold rush. He, is respo- he even is responsible for the Painted Desert, according to some of these tales. Um, and I've been to the Painted Desert, and I actually I remember seeing there, there is a little sign there um that talks about that that there were tales tall tales that pecos bill definitely tall tales yeah 
Now, at some point, Bill meets a woman named Slewfoot Sue, who rode a giant catfish down the Rio Grande River. Now, Bill is instantly smitten, like he would be, say, if he saw our Krista. Well, I mean, they better not, he not, better not be smitten with me. I'll fight. And so, Bill sets out to woo Slewfoot Sue. He shoots down all the stars above Texas, except for one, thus creating the Lone Star the state was named after. Uh, according to many of the stories, Sue wanted to ride Widowmaker, and unfortunately for her, Widowmaker didn't want her to ride him, partly because he didn't want to share Bill with her, and partly because he just didn't like her. He bucks her off at some point during the ride, and her bustle, and I have no idea what a bustle is, so I'll need you to explain after I'm done with this, uh -huh. uh, and her bustle is so springy, she bounced to the moon. In some stories, Bill catches her, but is carried to the moon with her, where they live together after that. In other stories, he uses shake to lasso her down. Uh, in others, she hits her head on the moon and is killed. In others, he rescues her, but she is so traumatized by the incident, she leaves Bill forever. Bill will marry many times, so the stories say, but there is no love in his heart greater than that he has for Slewfoot Sue. And because he was raised by coyotes, and because Bill gets sad whenever he sees the moon as full it was, uh, as it was the night he lost Sue, he gets sad, and the coyotes howl at the moon and mourn with him. Okay, so you need to know what a bustle is? Yeah, because I assumed you'd know. Yes, it is was part of a lady's undergarment in those wild western days. It was the big poofy part on the bottom, you know, like... Uh, oh, okay, so like yeah. they had those kind of bell dresses? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, and yeah. it was what... Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that makes more sense because I thought it was kind of a... Like their booty. Oh, okay. Like their booty bumper. Gotcha. I thought it was kind of a girdle, and I couldn't figure out no. how that could be so springy no. that you'd bounce. No, because it, it was a padded undergarment or wire, wire frame that was used to add fullness or support um, the drapery at the back of the woman's dress. So it was the boom, 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 chicka, boom, boom at the back of their little... Aha! Uh -huh. Girly gown. Gotcha. Uh-huh. All right. So now you know. Now I know what a bustle yeah. is. Absolutely. So, um, and I even showed you a picture. So, oh, I didn't see the picture. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll show you later. Remind me. Okay. So Bill, in these stories, had many, many, many adventures. But there is a story that purportedly records his death. A man from Boston decided to visit New Mexico, and he decided that he wanted to look the part of a cowboy. <coughs> he had lizard skin boots, brand new crisp blue jeans, a shiny brass belt buckle on a giant belt, a white button-up shirt, and a pristine white 10-gallon hat. When Bill saw this wannabe cowboy walking down the street, Bill laid down on the sidewalk and laughed himself to death. Oh! So, uh, Pecos Bill has appeared in comic books. Golden Books, Disney cartoons, mm -hmm. and live-action shows and movies. Roy Rogers, backed up by his band, the Sons of the Pioneers, narrated and voiced the Pecos Bill Mary Melodies cartoon by Disney. On the Showtime series Tall Tales and Legends, produced by Shelley Duvall, the Pecos Bill episode, Pecos was played by Steve Gutenberg, while Slewfoot Sue was played by Rebecca De Mornay, nice. which I had forgotten about that series, Tall Tales and Legends, and she had a, a that one came after Fairy Tales and something, but yeah, it was a series she had on Showtime back in the eighties, where she would produce these live action stories of like Cinderella and the Grimm's Fairy Tales, and after they started running out of them. They started doing tall tales like this. Gotcha. That's kind of awesome. Yeah. I, I adored Shelley DeFault. Yeah, I thought she was. Actress and, is, I thought she was still alive. She may be. I, I don't. She hasn't died. 
At least not in front of the camera. She may yeah. be working a lot behind the camera. I didn't bother to look, but yeah. yeah. So definitely, it, I'm definitely not the best with keeping up with people's. And of course, uh, I would be remiss in my duties as a host of a podcast if I didn't mention that in 1995, the Disney live-action movie Tall Tale, Pecos Bill is played by Patrick Swayze, because nobody puts Slewfoot Sue in a corner. Slewfoot Sue. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um. So that is the overall shape. Now I did not I did not include a lot of the stories because it's so easy to find them. I mean right. I the old Mary are. Melodies yeah. that you know and and like a lot of these tales are like uh he uh, according to one tale he, he he created the Rio Grande River with a forked stick because he got mad about something and I I forget what but like well I mean it's right up there with what's his name that we talked about um a couple of months ago the Swedish or what who got all the they took calm him down they got oh him yeah 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 show, yeah Kulen 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 yeah, yeah. Kulen it's that same kind of mentality it's that same really over the top crazy big stories. And I mean, we've talked about it before that that was kind of the way back then. They didn't have TV. They didn't have, you know, newspapers. Written stories were a new thing, but a lot of the things were oral tales that people would just tell tall tales. And there was no proving or disproving. People would be like, yeah, right. But at the same time, you know. <coughs> right, right. Thanks, Chris. I definitely agree. Um, to yeah, it's it's that same kind of over the top wild story, but well, yeah, and and the, but they're both cultural heroes, right? But it it's it, what you'd mentioned that I just finished l listening to the uh, audiobook version of American Gods, yeah. and so. That was in my head while doing this because um, Pecos Bill was not included in that book, never appeared. But it's all about belief, right? Uh, so, uh, like they had uh, John Chapman, who uh, every, people know him better as Johnny Appleseed, uh, who apparently is based off of a real person, but. Uh, they talked in there about like guys like Pecos Bill and Paul Bunyan who weren't create, who weren't, they didn't, they weren't like all the gods were grassroots. They sort of came from the people up. Right. Whereas Pecos Bill and um, Babe the Blue Ox, they came from ad companies or writers down to the people and then back up. So they take up, in that book, series of books, they take up headspace is what they do. Um, and I liked Disney's Tall Tale in that they could only really exist in that movie if someone believed in them. Right. And, and which is actually kind of tied to American Gods, weirdly in enough. That, right. It needs that, that faith, that imagination. And there's a lot of there's a lot of stories and thoughts that um from that idea. And we've even talked about it. The fact that sometimes where does all of that energy, all of that imagination energy go if we believe that the flow of the the flow of energy is what creates <coughs> actual things? which in general it is, even if those things are just ideas, then you could also, in theory, believe that enough of that energy could create an actual thing, which is kind of where the Wes Craven, um, that, the Freddy Said movie, when they talked about that's what Wes, Told 
Right, right, her right. Was that you know if and if you stop telling those stories, then where does that energy go? It can just go away, or does it turn into something? Absolutely, no. You're 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 totally right. Um, and the. Uh, <sighs> And the thing is, there were some stories I didn't want to tell, though, because this was written in a time where <sighs> cultural mores were radically different. Oh, absolutely. And so I don't want to tell a story where he's shooting indigenous people for whatever reason. Yeah, no. Absolutely because. Not. That's uh, important. Yeah, uh, because. I feel like we can reclaim our heroes sometimes, but you've also, if you're going to do that, you've got to be aware that certain things got to be let go. Like, and I don't blame anybody for not doing this, but I have never once seen the story, the animated story or live action where Pecos Bill is using snakes as whips and lassos. I just... I'm trying to picture that, and the only way I can picture it is animated. Exactly, like I'm picturing Ka in the Jungle Book or the. Uh... Well, I have to take that back for just one second because <coughs> I, I don't want to say it's absolutely ridiculous because my brain keeps flipping to. I was just watching the first season of um, The Legend of Vox Machina on Amazon with the kids the other day, and um, that pulls Simon out, and Simon is his belt, but his belt is enchanted, and when he pulls it off, it's a snake. It's Simon the snake. And so, that's the only thing, like, my brain was thinking about Simon, because it's like, you pulled him off, and he turned into a snake, he did what he needed him to do, and then he would turn back into a belt. Um, so, but... Again, that's an enchanted item that is a fantasy for sure. And so, you know, it's it's that same thing. It's a fantasy kind of situation. Right. Yeah, like I said, for me, the images I was getting was like Claw in um, the Jungle Book. Yeah. Or the uh, Serpent in um, Robin Hood. Sure. Which was really just Claw dressed up in fantasy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we really just Cod dressed up in, you know, tights for Robin Hood. Uh, and a hat. Yeah. And a little... Rough. Ruffle. Yeah, do snakes have necks? I don't think Not they do. Really? No. They don't have arms either, but there is a there is a scene in that movie where he crosses. Yeah. Well, he doesn't, he sort of folds his body like he's yeah, crossing his arms. Crossing, which, yeah, yeah. And pouting. Yeah. And pouting, yeah. So, but I'm just, I'm trying to picture the look on poor Shake's face as he's whipped around Pecos Bill's head, cast out at a herd full of cows. How does the snake... Expand itself to yeah. lasso an entire herd of horses? Yeah, cows? yeah, yeah. And then the poor snake used as a whip. I'm just like, how does he not just have a head in his hand at the end of the day? <laughs> and I know that's horrible imagery, but it's all I can think of. With another snake he uses as a whip. Yeah, I, I can see why cartoons aren't exactly grabbing that analogy there. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, it, and I guess to me, that's another thing is it got me to thinking about is, um, one of the points in American Gods, and it's an old book. Uh, it was a show on, on Showtime for a while. Uh, so I'm not going to spoiler alert this. You had plenty of time before I started talking about it. Um, but it, one of the central points is um, America's not a good land for God. And if you think about it, the guys that have done the best here traditionally... Uh, are guys created by, like, an ad agency, Paul Bunyan, a writer in Pecos Bill here. Uh, and that is assuming that they're, that folk folklorologists, folklore experts are right, and there was no oral tradition. It was just uh, 
what uh, Tex wrote down. Right. Um, but like I, like, and I read some of his other writing, and it comes off as real. But a lot of writing from the eighteen hundreds to me comes off as real braggy, braggadocious. Like, well, then I did this, and then I did that, and then I did this other thing. And I know most of you wouldn't, but I'm me, and so I'm cooler. <laughs> And it has that sort of thing about it. But Pecos Bill is different. And so maybe he did hear the story somewhere. But if so, it was maybe a regional thing. You know? It wasn't a a whole... But I tell you, there's people to the... Probably not the young generation. But anyone born before 2000 could probably tell you at least one Pecos Bill story. I'm pretty sure I had heard the story where he lassoed and rode whiskey. And that was actually what our teaser photo was about. Yes. I saw on Facebook. Yes. So, um, and yeah, I think that's one of probably the better, better known. Um, and like I said, I do remember there being a little plaque or something at the painted, painted desert talking about the fact that it, been, it had been right, right. So uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's ama- it's just amazing to me that it, it does work as and 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 see and I keep going back. It makes sense to me that one guy wrote it. Um, because, uh, but even though one guy wrote it, there's, there, other people have either written things to add to the tradition or it became an oral tradition after he wrote it. Sure. So other people. But I mean, you have to keep in mind that these are, those are the kinds of stories that they had then. I mean, we're talking about this is before there were libraries everywhere. This is before there were radios and televisions and ease of word of mouth, ease of descriptions and discussions, and and many, many, many Americans still could not read, could not write, you know? I mean, it really only been probably the last 85 years that people have really had, that all Americans have had access to public schools and public, and not, maybe even not even that much. So it makes sense that those stories would be taken from people who maybe heard them or read them in the bigger cities, and then they carry by word of mouth and they get changed and moved, and and then other people write down similar stories, and that's how things change and and grow. And yeah, and it also explains why you do have some crossover in these kinds sure. of stories, absolutely, because. Uh, maybe one guy hears a story about uh, Paul Bunyan and Babe up here, mm-hmm. and and I'm not sure when we'll cover that eventually. I'm not sure when that came out, but I want to say it was early 1900s as well. And that being, if that's the case, then we're still not. It, we don't have a, a, a wide exposure of radio. We still are a, a lot of times sitting around campfires or or in oh. drawing rooms. Telling stories to Absolutely. each other, so maybe one guy hears a a a uh, Paul Bunyan Babe story over here, but he winds up in Texas, so he tells it as a Pecos Bill story sure. there, and so you have crossover in the legends. People just sort of taking stuff around, which you have in almost all these cultural legends anyway. Absolutely. So, which to my mind makes it even more unique because. It's a tale written to be an oral legend that thus became an oral legend. Anything to add, Missy Chrissy? No. What's a slew foot? Uh, I do not know what slew foot is. Uh, I'm not super familiar, and I was never really into like Wild West stories. Native Americans. Native Americans. I, I'll edit. Don't worry. I was well, and that's. I was 
trying to use a vernacular, not trying to be offensive. So I apologize. In, it, in, in my brain, the vernacular is still that cowboys is like the game. Not that I'm trying to be rude to the culture of Native Americans and all of the different unique and amazing peoples that we have across this country who have beautiful and excellent traditions and uniqueness. I'm definitely not trying to take anything away from that, but just those ideas of kind of the older generation where I grew up, that was still a thing. Right. That was, that was still not an that was not offensive now that now that, you know, we have grown and learned more continuously as a society. Obviously it's not something that we try to say now, but that's <laughs> right, right. Uh, somebody look up Slewfoot while while oh, while we're <laughs> while we're still he, on the air. He can't let this go. What is a slewfoot? Well, I just found out what a bustle is. Oh, well, that's true. I I don't know that. I think that may just be a name, but we'll look here. It's probably well. It it, uh, it hold on. A, a foot like a slew, S L U E. But what the heck is slew? Hold on. Because I'm, I've always vaguely felt like that was like a synonym for something dirty. Yeah. That, you know, it, you can say the synonym, but not the dirty, like, you know, the baby made a mess in his diapers rather than, well, you know the other way to say that. It, it's like a euphemistic phrase. You know what I'm talking about, Demix. But, yeah, so. It, okay. So. According to Merriam-Webster, blue-footed would mean having big, clumsy, or turned out feet. No wonder the horse. <laughs> well, <sighs> like a kind of a little bit like a club foot or or something along those lines. I see, I see, yeah. Kind of like um, our Krista for half a second. Not, she wasn't anywhere near that bad, but yeah. Uh, it, it's also known as uh, duck footed. Okay. I'm duck footed. Yeah. Yep. It's called metatarsal duck. Yeah. Duck. Yes. Which, when you were younger, you had an interesting way of running. That always made me laugh a little bit, but I never laughed around you because I was so scared that you'd think I was laughing at you, which she I... She still runs like that. You just don't notice it as much. <laughs> I don't run as much. But... Well, you know, I'm a firm believer in that you shouldn't run unless you're being chased. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> and then... I was trying to think of, like, Pecos Bill. Patrick Swayze did a good job. You know, but Patrick Swayze did good at a I lot of roles. I say, there's, there were very... I can't really think of anything that Patrick Swayze ever was in that he didn't do. And I'm sorry, but I really like the nobody puts Slewfoot's who in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but if you were going to cast, you know, Pecos Bill today, who would you cast? I mean, uh, no, no. no. It, 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 he's got a big personality, which is what it would take, but he's not. Also, he looks strong. And he does look strong. He looks strong. like he could create the gold mine. He looks like. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I see your point there. Um, I was thinking Benedict Cumberbatch, who I'm convinced can play anybody, and, uh, oh, what's his name, who played Tony Stark? Why can't I think of his name? Uh, uh, played, he played Charlie Chaplin. Is he? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. 
There we go. Yes. But I think Robert Downey Jr. is kind of a cheat because I think he's proven he can play almost anybody. Yeah. How about, uh... If we don't find out soon, I'm going to start spitting out random actors. What do you mean find out soon? We're just spitballing. Yeah, Chris, that's that's all. What about, what about one of your boys from Supernatural? What's his name? The one that likes country music. Country boy, I love you. Is that Sam? That's Sam Winchester. Yeah, yeah he, would, he would be a good one. Yeah, he would. There you go. I made her blush. Look. <laughs> Look, I made her blush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't remember who plays Sam. Jensen Ackles is Dean, I'm pretty sure, though. Yeah, yeah Jensen Ackles. And then that one's Jared well, pa- Padaleski. Yeah. 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 Yeah, who had the misfortune of playing Walker? Or uh, Steve Burton. Steve Burton. Steve Burton did Cloud's voice for Final Fantasy, and um, and um, uh, the Kingdom Hearts. He's also from. A, he's also in a band, and he's from a soap opera, and he kind of has this. Like that, like tough guy, rock in the west. Oh no! You gave me an idea. Oh no! <laughs> here we go. Y'all ready to? Critical be here Role for seven season moments? two. Who did the the orc from Texas? Oh, uh, that's um, yeah, that's uh, Laura and uh, her husband. Uh, Travis. Travis. Travis William. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Travis Willingham. He would do great as Pecos Bill. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, and he's you know he's been superheroes already, so he's got it down. Like he, him and Laura have played <coughs> have played uh, Superman and Lois Lane, and and he's been all kinds of different. Yeah, shows but I don't think he they played the good Superman and Lois Lane. Okay, you know what? Don't start with. Me. Anyway. Well, no. Um. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here, let me explain why I say the good Superman, mm. Lois Lane, okay? Yeah. And, and I don't know who the actors are that did it, okay. so I'm not... It may have been them. I don't think so. I think that's the first time they've played. In, in but... The but... Uh, Justice League Dark, Apocalypse War. Mm. Okay? Uh... Superman spends most of the series running around depowered because he's caught early on by Darkseid, who gives him a liquid kryptonite S tattoo. Fine. Yeah. Uh, not a great movie, like a lot of the Justice League die in it and whatever, but they reset everything with a flashpoint. But anyway, but that Lois, his wife, beats the piss out of Harley Quinn. Nice. So, yeah, so, uh, it just, I like seeing them on an well, even... I, 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 don't, I, do, I don't know whether they were in that or not, but I do know that Laura Bailey played an ascending fate in a recent video game and did an immaculate, amazing job, so... And I heard that... Uh... So at at some point they were announcing a Last of Us three. I don't know that, but I mean they. I know for sure Laura did voices in Last uh, Last of Us two, maybe Last of Us one, and I feel like Travis may have done. I don't know. But I'm not. Anyway, we are like way off. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so the point is. Yeah, we were looking for, and now we've gone off into critical have, role land. We have jumped down the rabbit hole, and we're kind of skimmering along. But yes, just to finish the my my thought and the dynamic on that, Lois and Clark was even with the power levels reduced, they still had the same kind of relationship, right. <laughs> and and like the part that that won me over with that couple was. Uh, Lois is in the ring with Harley just to get Harley to help them with something, right? right? And 
So it's the only way it's going to work. So what's Clark do? Mind you, he's still just depowered Clark. So doesn't have any... Kick her butt, honey! And that's the moment I'm like, yep, I'm all in on this. Yep, what did you do? Kick her butt, honey! That's right. That's how we, that's how we stand up for our men sometimes. That's how we stand up for our women sometimes. We, you get them, honey! I'm just going to be right here holding your purse. I'm the one in the fight, most likely. I, I believe it. But I, I do think that that probably brings us Yes, yes. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, thanks for keeping us in the Good Pods Top 100. Uh, I don't know how you guys do it, but thank you. Uh, thanks to who, who, whoever is in Saudi Arabia that's been listening to us. We are uh, Top 200 on iTunes there. That's so we're good with. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Please keep listening. And hey, join our Facebook group. Let us know. You know, we'd love to meet, so to speak, any and all of our listeners. So uh, thanks to uh, Bill Berent. Uh, that last name is spelled B-E-H-R-E-N-D-T. Uh, Bill is the man who did our theme music. If you need music for a project, Bill's your guy. If you, he's also a musician, so if you need a musician for an event, uh, Bill is still your guy. Uh, plus, he is one half of the Rusty and Dusty podcast, so catch that. You can reach Bill at Bill Barrent at sbcglobal.net. Uh, also, thanks to Paige Elmore of the Reverie Crime Podcast, which is an amazing crime podcast, but she's also got an amazing addiction to the Canva app, which she has combined with our own Krista's artwork uh, to do some fantastic logo art for us. Thank you, Paige. Thank you, Paige. Uh, thanks also to Aaron Gnerk of the Big Dumb Fun Show for continuing to promote us locally. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, as I said, please join our Facebook group. Uh, join us next week as we look into the murder of Sir Harry Oaks. Bye. Bye. Bye.